Okay, so uh, I would like to speak today about turbulent transport of particles. Uh, we speak about theory, experiments, and observations, and numerical simulations. Experiments in the laboratory, experiments and numerical simulations. Okay, uh, this is uh, basically a review of works which have been done uh, during 15 years. Uh, in collaboration with Toval Perin and our experimental uh, uh, people, Alex uh, Edelman and our PhD students. Um, basically, these problems are very similar to Dynamo. This was uh, one of the motivations why, should, why we started to study these processes. So we'll speak about large-scale clustering or formation of large-scale homogeneous structures in the scale which are much larger than the forcing scale or uh, integral scale of turbulence. Of course, for modeling, in DNS modeling, in this case, forcing scale should be smaller than the size of the box. Uh, in other, and this process is, is very similar to the mean field diagram. Another uh, processes which are occur at the very small scales, in the scales which are much smaller than integral scale of turbulence, and this is small scale clustering. Uh, and uh, this process is sometimes also similar to small scale diagram. At least uh, it's possible to use the same tools, uh, the same approaches to study these problems. Even we use uh, terminology from magnetic field tangent mechanism, which is a universal mechanism. Just if you have vector, like mean magnetic field, just tangling of this mean magnetic field by the last of rotations produces tangling magnetic rotations. And uh, the similar for the temperature, we have gradient of mean temperature, just tangling of the uh, uh, of the gradient of mean temperature, but the velocity fluctuation produces this type of fluctuations. Uh, just to do, for example, this term, or if we have gradient of mean number density, uh, just tangent of gradient of mean number density by velocity fluctuations produces uh, fluctuations of particles number density. Of course, there are a lot of examples of turbulent flows. Uh, and uh, turbine transport of particles, uh, or temperature field, has a very important role in different processes. And, uh, for example, uh, sometimes we see clouds, large-scale clouds of particles, or small clouds of aerosols uh, in different cities. And what is the reason for formation of large-scale large scale clouds, large scale clustering. We have, if we have turbulence, turbulence causes relaxation of any homogeneity of in particle spatial distributions. So what is the opposite process? What is the process which results in formation of inhomogeneities? Uh, we found that uh, for particle transport there is effective velocity which is determined by the correlation between velocity fluctuations and divergence of velocity fluctuations. We know that uh, kinetic, uh, kinetic helicity plays a very important role uh, in dynamo, which is correlation between velocity and curl of velocity fluctuations. But here for particle transport, this correlation function is very important. And what we found that there is a, this effective velocity is proportional to the minus gradient of mean temperature. So if we have, for example, profile of temperature, this mean temperature distribution for the minimum, then this effective velocity is directed to the minimum of mean temperature. Uh, and uh, it can result in accumulation of particles inside the large-scale clouds. Uh, for example, it is known in atmosphere, in atmospheric turbulence, uh, that 
there is a very good correlation between the appearance of temperature inversion, this is a temperature minimum, and appearance of the uh, aerosol particles. This is distribution of aerosol particles. There are a lot of examples that in spite of the strong turbulence, nevertheless, particles tend to be accumulated inside the uh, temperature inversion in the vicinity of the minimum mean temperature. This examples, for example, stratospheric turbulence, but we also have a lot of examples in uh, in uh, uh, usual boundary layer atmospheric turbulence. So, what do we know about turbulence? How turbulence affects the particles? It was known from the time of Taylor that uh, turbulence causes strong increase of diffusion coefficient. So, turbulence causes relaxation of any particles and homogeneities. Uh, so that, if we consider mean field equation for the number density, there is uh, here turbulent diffusion, and usually this turbulent diffusion is much more effective than molecular bronze diffusion. So, they, nevertheless, we observe a lot of homogeneities in the particle special distributions. So, what is the mechanism of such? Uh, of such the fact. Okay, so what we have to do with the particles? We have exact equation, evolutionary equation of particles. This is number density of particle, special distribution. Vp is the velocity of particles, which uh, usually, uh, if particles are very small, coincides with the fluid velocity. And this is problem in diffusion. So if we would like to, to know about the large scale effects, of course we have to average this equation over the ensemble of uh, velocity fluctuations, and we obtain mean field equation. Well, this is mean number density, mean velocity, this is turbulent diffusion, this molecular diffusion. And what we really found that there is addition to the turbulent flux of particles. So this addition of affected velocity multiplied by n by mean number density. And this is turbulent diffusion. And this affected velocity is proportional to minus correlation time multiplied by the correlation to the loss of equations and divergence of the loss of equations. When we have the... Mm. Yeah. 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 So okay. It already occurs in the homogeneous case. Sorry? It occurs already in the homogeneous case. If we have a uh, homogeneity of turbulence, of course it occurs. No, I mean, it doesn't occur in the homogeneous case without the homogeneity. Uh, this occurs for the case when turbulence is uh, can be homogeneous, of course. Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no turbulence. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no, now. No, that can't be true. Okay, you, you let's. Have a okay. Sorry? I thought you needed density. Okay, if there is, okay, if we have density stratification, of course, in order to have divergence, we need to have divergence of velocity. Yes. And divergence yes. of velocity is determined, for example, in an, in an elastic approximation. Uh, it, it is uh, determined by the gradient of density. Okay, but we'll speak. But, yeah, but I mean, how much? It would still be in the, in the statistical or in the average sense of the homogeneous cell, the homogeneous cell. I don't think so. Uh, it's I don't be surprised, but uh, this result indicates that it could be homogeneous. Okay, uh -huh. uh, let me. Okay, uh, l let us remember your question, okay. and we will ask. We will answer a little later. Maybe should. Okay. Important to pay attention that you it is particles velocity, not yeah. uh, not gas. Yeah. Okay. Now let's mm. consider simple calculation, which practically people do in dynamo theory. So we have. Mean exact mean field equation. Mean uh, exact equation for the number density. Uh, let us use mean field approach and average this equation over the ensemble of turbulent velocity field. We we'll obtain mean field equation. So instead of time derivative of uh, total number density, we have time derivative of number density. Here we have product of this. Which have this strong. Let's consider for simplicity that mean velocity equals zero. No mean flow. So we have mean value of this term, and it is equals 
uh, growing diffusion coefficient multiplied by what plus alpha. So, uh, so this is a known object. Flux, turbulent flux of particles. In the magnetic field we have, in that place, electromotive force. So, we need equation for number density of particles. So, subtract from the total equation, mean field equation, we have equation for fluctuations. So, time derivative, rolling diffusion, nonlinear term, and source. Source has two terms, and multiplied, mean number density multiplied by the divergence, mm -hmm. and the second term, u number n. Why do you call that nonlinear term? Sorry? Why do you call that nonlinear term? Why this nonlinear term? Because we have, this is term nonlinear in fluctuations. We have fluctuations of number density and fluctuations of velocity. So this is nonlinear in terms of fluctuations, as usual. For example, when we consider equation for the, uh, for the magnetic field, of course we have here uh, the same structure like uh, okay, eta f is equals curl. Uh, okay, we, we can write this is uh, okay, for example this way. Just uh, u cross b minus u cross b v. And okay, and e equals source term uh, plus to, uh, plus source term. Here. Okay, uh, in principle, uh, just uh, if we write this equation, we can rewrite this equation in the form of exact equation. The n over the t plus u nabla n equals minus n dvi dxi divergence and plus d laplace n. n. If we write this exact equation for the magnetic field, for example, for incompressible flow, we see here dBi and dt plus u nabla bi equals uh, b uh, b nabla u bj d dxj d uh, okay. Okay, u plus eta plus b i so we see that this equation are very similar just difference here this is a trace of this and this is divided by dxj but the form of the equation is exactly similar okay in the case of magnetic induction equation the essential point is that the momentum equation depends on the magnetic field through the okay. Then Here, we call it nonlinear. Here we can so say the same. In your case, yeah, 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 I have to show Okay, okay, but okay. Uh, of course, there is a back reaction yeah. of uh, magnetic field on the motions, and here there can be also back reaction of yeah. particles to the motions. Okay. If, but, if, uh, if uh, mass of particles multiplied by uh, number density of the order of the density of fluid, which implies mass loading parameter is of the order of one, then nonlinear effects became important. So there are a lot of similarities. Okay, now, uh, okay, that's implied the form. So the similar form will be for magnetic field. So we have uh, these terms, we have nonlinear terms, and we have a source term in the presence of mean field. So, so this problem can be solved by any kind of methods. Uh, by second order correlation approximation or quasi linear approach, by even by dimensional analysis, tau approximation, pass integral approach, any kind of approach yields the same result. Okay, let's, let's use dimensional arguments because it's more simple. So the dimension of this quantity is n divided by some time. So from here, so if we replace this quantity, 
n tau divided by tau, so we can determine here just fluctuations of n. And there are two terms due to the source term. Then multiplied by the velocity, we obtain two terms here. This is turbulent diffusion term, and this is term with effective velocity. It's funny that these simple calculations yields exact answer, exact answer for the effective velocity. The same can be obtained using second order correlation approximation when we draw this term, then we use Fourier representation and then or perform very simple calculations and obtain this result. That's the same as your V effective, right? You call it yeah. V effective. Okay, so okay. this term we write like N mean number density multiplied by the V effect. So we oh, have see, here sorry. V effective, yes. this is the first term. Okay. Sure. And the second term is a turbulent diffusion mm -hmm. term. Because uh, when we have here uh, these flux of particles, And the second term we can write like minus tau uj u uh, u i u j uh, multiplied by nabla j n for isotropic turbulence Reynolds stresses u i u j one third u square delta i j and we immediately obtain that this term yields tau u squared divided by 3 multiplied by nabla i n so this is turbulent diffusion term and this is effective velocity so now can I, I don't understand the origin of this uh, equation for n oh uh, this H. no no this okay. this okay yeah. okay it, it okay. is not an exact no Okay, this equation is exact. Yeah. Okay, this equation is exact. With nothing did. So this is okay, and we can apply any kind of procedure, including second order correlation approximation. Okay. I can perform now calculations using second order correlation approximation, but it doesn't. We doesn't need. We can obtain this answer even from dimensional reasoning. Dimension of this quantity m divided by tau, n tau divided by tau of this term. Of course, uh, just this, this is very simple exercise to use uh, quasi-linear approach. When we draw non-linear term, we immediately obtain here. We immediately obtain here that uh, in a Fourier representation, uh, this equation has the following solution. I omega uh, plus dk square <laughs> multiply m tag that equal source term and then m tag uh, I to the function omega k uh, divided by the green function. This is solution. Then we calculate the two point correlation function and do an instantaneous correlation function u i omega k multiplied by n tag minus omega minus k and obtain immediately that. Uh, what is the I omega? I omega source term. Uh, this is uh, a source term. This is uh, n la, uh, n uh, minus tau I no, 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 I. No, just a moment. No, no. U I omega K. Uh, and the second term is minus uh, tau uj omega k multiplied by num 
And then we write this equation for minus omega minus k, because k and in the second position, so we will obtain plus uh, minus 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 minus, and substitute this in this equation, we obtain these results, this result, but effective velocity, okay, dt as usual will be tau naught u naught square divided by uh, multiplied by picle number picle is uh, u naught l naught divided by d this picle number ok we obtain this but effective velocity equals minus uh, plus dt multiplied by grad rho divided by rho uh, but uh, ok why is it 12? Hmm? where does the 12 come from? Uh, why this 12? one sort uh, there is uh, yeah. from integration over yeah. the angles yes. and the additional uh, one uh, force uh, arises uh, when you integrate over case in k space but it doesn't matter it, it is a simple mm. exercise it can mm. be these, these two results are exact in, in the mod sense. They are for so far, true. Okay. And they are for the low divisivity limit. Okay. And they are for us. Okay. Right? Uh, this is I perform. I mean, I mean these results. This result. Uh, this, this result. These two. D T and B F. Okay. This and uh, this, mm -hmm. this and this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, this okay. result. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are, uh, we obtain this result mm -hmm. using dimensional analysis. Yeah. Using quasi-linear approach. Uh -huh. Using pass integral approach, uh -huh. using renormalization approach, okay. uh, any kind of procedure. Okay, I see, these are approaches. Next is uh, low diffusivity limit, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, we can, okay, low diffusivity limit. Because it, in whatever okay. diffusivity is not a Just for a moment. If we apply quasi linear approach, it will vary when we plan number much smaller than unity. If we apply, for example, tau approximation, it will be much larger than unity. Then, if we apply a uh, pass integral approach, so we have to take into account at the end finite correlation time. Okay, uh, if non inertial particles, this is short correlation time. It's, it's enough, that's correct in time losses. But, Okay. I say, in some sense, this result is that. Okay, next thing, isotropy. Mm -hmm. so the, the it's the, you can use any kind of background turbulence. I mean, okay. Isotropic, anisotropic. I refer to this formula. The, the total intensivity is surely valid for isotropic turbulence, no? It was yeah. for isotropic, it works. It's this is I write this result for isotropic. And the next, the next result, the effective, effective should be zero in the case of isotropy. Mm. Looking at no, this, no, this no. If you have density stratified flow, you obtain the ones. Mm. Yeah, let's, but that's not okay. homogeneous. Uh, uh, in okay, motion. let's let's U okay. Okay. may be homogeneous. Okay. Uh, but energy is not homogeneous. Okay, we will discuss this. So, question about isotropy uh, uh, homogeneity, we will discuss. Okay. Could, could I postpone this? Okay, now uh, let's consider low Mach number flow. So, in the continuity equation for fluid, term d rho over dt is small, because it's proportional to Mach square. Uh, so, we have an elastic approximation. From here, we can express divergence, like minus u, u double rho divided by rho. Now, this is form of effective velocity which we obtain by any kind of procedures. Now so let us substitute these divergence in this unelastic approximation. So what we have? We have here uh, ui, uj. This is j. This is ui. Grad rho divided by rho. So this is tensor determines turbulent diffusion. Okay? So 
for a for any kind of turbulence. So if we can consider isotropic turbulence, then we immediately obtain that this u i u j one third of uh, u square multiplied delta i j we obtain this simple coefficient like d t. Okay, but uh, if we substitute here anisotropic, any anisotropic turbulence, we obtain anisotropic corrections. But the, there is a gradient of the density of the turbulence should not be isotropic. If there is a gradient of density, uh, turbulence. Uh, In general, it's not isotropic. There, there is a uh, there is a preferential direction. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, but our observation, for example, yeah, yeah, okay. is but this uh, this anisotropic is very small. It depends on stratification, yeah. of course, if you impose. But it's not it's not a main equation. You know, you can you can get the effect survives for any kind of turbulence. Yeah. In the previous slide, the u that you write is actually the particle velocity or the fluid velocity. Okay. Up to now, we consider non-inertial particles, which implies the velocity of particles exactly equals velocity of fluid flow. Okay? This implies Stokes time tends to zero. Size of the particles tends to zero. We will come to this question in the next slide. Okay, now, so we need to obtain that effective velocity is a turbulent diffusion coefficient multiplied by gradient of density divided by the density. If gradient, okay, if uh, if from the equation of state for the idle gas follows that follows that grad, gradient pressure divided by pressure equals gradient of density divided by density plus gradient of temperature divided by temperature. If external pressure gradient pressure is absent, then grad rho divided by rho equals minus grad t divided by t. Substitute this is here, obtain minus dt grad t divided by t. Which implies that part, this effective velocity is directed to the minimum of mean temperature. So this is, if I understand right, this is just a statement that your, um, your particle number density divided by gas density ratio wants to diffuse itself to constant. Uh, in, in average. Okay, we will come to this question. You mean what will be for the mean numbers? And we will consider uh, uh, the equation for the mean field equation, and it will solve with steady it state. More, more intuitive, just write your the evolution equation of n divided by rho. My average equation for uh, for n for mean the number unit. density. So rather than writing for n. For mean number density, yeah. Yeah, but he's interested so in the number density per unit mass. Yeah, we will, we will speak no, no, no. about this. We will come to this. Because in I have in the slide for this. What? In mm. in okay, so. But for now okay, uh, this is we'll discuss. Okay, now, what will be. N is the particles you put into it. Yeah. So remember, if I have non inertial particles, I can create an N by painting every other particle gold. And then you can basically just say your n over rho wants to tend to constant. Okay. What you're saying average. about, Just we have two equations. Uh, this is uh, this constant. If what I mean, you're I mean, saying about, correct. we have two uh, equations. dn over dt plus divergence n u no, equals d Laplace n, and mm -hmm. we have continuity equation for fluid. For be at least for large packing numbers. So if you have rho, equals zero. Rho is acting back on of the course, field. you can introduce yeah. mass yeah. mass density of particles. Mm -hmm. Mass particles multiplied by n divided by rho. And derive equation for C. If you derive equation for C, indeed, equation for C has the following form. So this divergence term is excluded. But we speak about the number density. Mm -hmm. This is important point. Okay, now, your question about non-inertial particles. Now, you if we have non-inertial particles... This is not strictly true, right? It's not Sorry? Right. It's not right either. For C, it's not a question. If we take C over rho here. Uh, for C, it's not a question. This term, rho C divided by... Yes. This rho term C will be, you know... One divided by rho. Strictly speaking, at least. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, it will be. 
Okay, okay. there will be here diffusion term. Some the diffusion term. Gradient term. zero ego. Yeah, okay, okay, but gradient since zero. we consider the since since for instance the, the case of large peak clear number, what will be here? It doesn't fall at all. Okay? At all. No, no, no. Uh, I, sp I said, when I said large peak clear number, it's immediately said that mo mo molecular diffusion much smaller than two. Yeah? Okay? Okay, now let's continue. If we have inertial particles, so we have here drug force, Stokes force, and plus gravitation plus gravity field. And we can solve this equation just for, for, for perturb, uh, using perturbation approach for small stock style. And express velocity of particles in terms of, of velocity of fluid flow. So velocity of particles equals U plus inertia effect. And plus other terms which are high order in stock style. This deviation is small for small stock. But divergence of these deviations is not small. If we calculate divergence of Vp, we obtain divergence u plus tau p, and instead of this, this blood pressure divided by rho, if we calculate divergence, we obtain Laplace of pressure. And this is a term very important. The physics of this term I will explain in a minute. But bottom line is the following. The form of effective velocity will be the same, just uh, we have coefficient alpha, which has non-inertial contribution, non-inertial particle, plus effect of inertia. That's it. But behavior will be similar. Uh, okay, now. So, what is the main result? Main result that the particles should be accumulated in the vicinity of the temperature minimum or maximum of density of fluid. Okay, why? Why particles should be accumulated in the vicinity? Why the flux of particles should be directed in the direction of heat flux? Okay, let's consider particles inside the two containers. Due to the inertia effects, they carry out of the boundary between the regions. These regions with, between the eddies, this is the regions with the maximum fluctuations of pressure or minimum particity. Or so locally, they are accumulated between the eddies. If there is no any preferential directions, no mean field effect. But if we impose heat flux to the system, we immediately have preferential direction. And it is easy to show just by very simple arguments that the flux of particles should be directed as well as the heat flux. Let's consider two control volumes. At some instant, this, this velocity is directed uh, as well as the heat flux. And here, the velocity is directed in this way. Okay? So, this is positive direction, x. So, since there is a heat flux, u, tap, u multiplied by theta is positive. Since we have heat flux in that direction. In this control vo volume, fluctuations are velocity positive. So, since this product is positive, theta fluctuations are positive. Positive, uh, what has been positive, so increase temperature at, at that moment. Positive fluctuations of temperature produces positive fluctuations of pressure. Uh, what, is, what does it mean this? This is just this residues. Between eddies. In this region, maximum fluctuations of pressure. Only particles. So it causes particles come to this region, so it causes positive fluctuation of number, density. Just a moment. Yeah? So product U by N is positive. So at, the, at this control volume, at some instant, flux, mean flux of particles is directed as well as the heat flux. Let's consider the opposite case. U is directed in that way. Since product U by theta is positive, we have negative fluctuations of theta. Negative fluctuation of theta produces negative fluctuations of pressure. What does it mean? This is just regions inside the eddies. And particles 
go out from these regions, which implies that fluctuations of number density are negative. So here, decreased fluctuations of number density, n is negative, but product u by n is positive again. Negative u, negative n produces positive flux. So even here, flux of particles is directed as well as a heat flux. Okay, you. Uh, somewhat tangential question. If you go back one slide. Yes. Uh, yes. If I take this picture seriously to kind of compare with simulations. Yeah. What do you mean by turbulent eddies? How do I in okay. a simulation? How do I know where turbulent? I will show you. I will show you at least experimental picture. What does mean this eddies? Okay. In a two two slides. Okay. Okay. Now. As I said, uh, this effect of turbulent thermal diffusion, or this effect of velocity, was studied in a number of papers, starting with this, and uh, people used different approach. As Pandai uh, Mashaik used functional approach, uh, Riggs used some variations of classical, but in another form. Okay, any kind of approach yields this result. So we don't know any result, any studies which produces another result. Okay. Uh, okay, one, now. Just, just one comment. Yeah. Go back a slide. Yes. So you are telling us that to take the D effective so seriously that there is no factor of one third, pi by two, or three by four in front. Uh, <laughs> this okay. coefficient here is exactly one, the coefficient. Yeah. There is no one third, two by no. five. No. no. Yeah. Okay. From all the theories. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, interesting question. There is a paradox. We have two equations. Continuity equation for the fluid. And equation for the number density. The mathematical difference only in this term. That's it. Now, if we average this equation, we never obtain turbulent diffusion. Term. If we average this equation of velocity field, we do obtain turbulent, uh, turbulent diffusion. We all know that main, main term which is responsible for turbulent diffusion for any kind of field this is this term. Yeah. U nabla n. In exact equation. Or U nabla rho. This term produces turbulent diffusion. Now, from mathematical point of view, why? One equation produces turbulent diffusion, another, other yeah. equation not. Yeah, why can you say that why? I mean, the continuity equation gives a mass flux term. Why continuity equation for fluid? Yeah. Just this. The, if we average this equation, yeah. the form of this equation is this. We have turbulent diffusion. If we average this equation, we obtain so turbulent you, diffusion. So you're saying rho prime times uh, u prime it average should be zero, zero somehow. Yes. It should be zero. Yeah, but that's an assumption. That is it's not, not an assumption. assumption. It's exact it's result. Now, it's the question is why? Why? Not How is it possible to explain this no, paradox? This. From a mathematical point of view, very simple. I mean, that, no. in the stratified atmosphere, for example, you can have a, a mean flow, which is com uh, compensated by, by small scale. No, there is for slow Mach nab, we never observe it. Okay. In the stratified okay. atmosphere, but, uh, we never observe it. I don't think. Okay. Now, how would you solve this paradox? No, no. I okay. mean, it's well known that, is that in stratified you convection, need you, you need have to a uh, change of pressure. If it's change of pressure. So one thing you can do is you can... In, pre you can in pressure, say, decrease okay. density. Okay. Let me continue. Okay. Maybe, so maybe so after that, all equations will disappear. <laughs> Let's start with this equation. Let's average this equation over the number. I do have one quick question. How are you defining your average length? Any kind. Yeah. Special ensemble average. Time ensemble ergodicity. We have ergodicity in all you, you actually mean Reynolds average. Huh? You actually mean Reynolds average. Sorry? 
You actually Reynolds River. Reynolds River. Yeah, Reynolds River. We, 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 we separate field for the main field and situations, but what kind of averaging? You're not, you're not supposed any to preference. You're not supposed to do something like a densely weighted average. No, no, no. No. Okay. okay, now, we get this equation. After averaging, we obtain this equation with effective velocity, which has such form. If we, we substitute here effective velocity. So we have such equation. Now, why in density equation, density of fluid, we don't have turbine diffusion? Now let us replace here n by rho. So what we have? d rho over dt plus divergence n a rho multiplied by v. Here, instead of n, we replace rho. So rho cancelled with this rho. This is rho. And this term is cancelled by this term. So what is the bottom line? If we haven't taken into account this effective velocity, we will never resolve this paradox. So this is also one of the indications why this result is correct. We see. Let us substitute it uh, instead of rho, uh, instead of n rho. This term is cancelled. Then this term is cancelled to wind diffusion. And we obtain correct equation. So from mathematical point of view, we don't speak about the physics. We have two equations which have the similar form. And we know which term is responsible here for turbulent diffusion. Um, so, so, what exactly is dt? How do you write that? Okay, dt. Yeah, of course it's true for the turbulence. Okay, Here, we have terms of tau, u i, u j. This is d i j tensor. Right. Yeah. So is this exact or this has some factors one third, two fifth, or whatever? No, one third or fifth uh, will appear after that when we sub when we use the model of turbulence. This model of turbulence exactly yields you if we have one sort of isotropic turbulence or other. This is exact. So what is the, in the case of isotropic turbulence, for example, we have dt uh, delta ij. If it is not isotropic, there are anisotropic corrections. Like uh, we have some uh, direction, so this is one, two, contribution and that's it. Depending on what what kind of preferential directions we have. Somehow it seems to me that this form of the V effective is more fundamental than writing in terms of V dot divergence yeah. V. Exactly. Because this exactly matches the equation. If, if you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. Is that is that comment correct or is So uh, you you mean the following if we put here instead of V effective U divergence U. Yes. Here, instead of the tau U I U J, because this original form, of course, this is uh, for any kind of turbulence, of course, yeah. For in, point, in elastic approximation. In elastic, for uh, low Mach number flow. At some point here, it just strikes me as you have to be doing effectively your, effectively mass weighting your momentum of averaging. Uh, your, your, your velocity of Equation of what? Uh, momentum you, averaging. Your, 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 you're not doing velocity averaging, you're doing momentum averaging. It's, it's the only way this makes sense to me. Because otherwise you do What is the difference between the velocity? Okay, we average over statistics of turbulent velocity. You can call this in, of, in any kind of form. In terms of volume or in terms of mass? Any of kind of average. We don't specify any, any kind of average. Those are very different results. One of the results Let, in, 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 in Coefficients in may be different. No, no. One, one, one technique doesn't result in diffusion in the mass equation. Yeah. The other technique results <coughs> in turbulent pressure. Yeah. Okay, we will, we will discuss this. 
We will discuss this later, okay? Now, okay, so we have theoretical result. Is it true or not? Is it really true? Can we believe this or not? Let's perform experiment. During five years, we called with different experimental groups and asked to check this effect. Then after five years, we wrote a proposal and got one and a half million dollars in 2000 and in 2000 and built laboratory and performed experiments. This was one of the main goal of this laboratory. So, first experiment. Let's create turbulence by oscillating grids near the wall. So yet there is a forcing for turbulence, but not in that way, just there are oscillations near the wall. Perform experiments in the air flow. For example, uh, uh, for example, if we put without any temperature gradient, if we put particles here, we obtain uh, that uh, after very short time we, we have uniform distribution. Uh, Stroboscope, yeah? Yeah, uh, this, no, this is, okay, this is, uh, I will explain, this is laser, which double pass laser, uh, just in a minute, uh, yeah. Uh, in the beginning of your talk, you should have said that it involves flash photography. Sorry? <laughs> well, I, I, I will, uh, one slide later, uh, one, okay, so this is our experimental setup, so laser with the optics produces laser sheet, we put inside uh, sitting particles and Miss scattering is uh, scattering of light uh, from particles is registered by one or two CCD cameras. So we use a stand now. It is a standard technique which is for measure of velocity field. So we have double pulse laser to pulses with a time interval microseconds. Then we have two images. And then correlation analysis of these two images immediately yields us velocity field. Okay, about your question. Instantaneous velocity field. Now, if we subtract, if we average this field over the ensemble of many velocity independent maps taken with the time interval more than correlation time, we obtain mean velocity field. Subtract from the total field, mean velocity field, we obtain fluctuations. This is a picture of fluctuations. This is about the equation of eddies. We see eddies of different scales. This is streamlines. Okay. Spectrum, okay, there is small difference from 5 so but it's uh, yeah, but it doesn't mean, doesn't uh, important the form of the spectrum. Also, this technique allows to measure correlation lengths, integral scale of turbulence, just measuring of two-point correlation function. So we have velocity, turbulent velocity, we have integra uh, integral scale of turbulence, we can estimate immediately correlation time. We measure also temperature field using a special probe with 12 thermocouples, so in 12 position in the, in the same time we can measure temperature, then move this probe we obtain uh, temperature field. Results. Heating above, cooling below, which applies stable stratified flow. Heating above. This is red high temperature, blue low temperature. This is the distribution of number density. Red high concentration, blue low concentration. We see that particles are accumulated in the vicinity of the minimum of mean temperature. Okay, you say gravity field. Let us change direction of temperature gradient. Heating above or below, cooling above. But since we have forcing, we destroy large scale convective circulations. So we have here real unstably stratified flow. Low temperature, higher concentration of particles. High temperature, low concentration of particles. Now, let us create more complicated temperature field, just decreasing the frequency of oscillations. Low temperature, 
high concentration of particles. <laughs> high temperature, low concentration of particles. So we see from these pictures that particles tend to be accumulated in the vicinity of uh, minimum mean temperature. So heat flux is directed as well as a uh, so flux of particles is directed as well as a heat flux to the minimum of mean temperature. What, what about the density? Okay. Uh, uh, since we work in gas and there is no any external grad gradient of pressure, so so in that case In that case, radial density divided by density equals minus gradient of temperature divided by temperature. So in the regions with a higher fluid, a uh, higher temperature, uh, low temperature, this is higher density. But, but so it's is the increase in density comparable to, incre to the increase in concentration? Or okay. by flow no, and less. bar over row bar. Less. Yes. Okay, it's less. Particles okay. increase more. But that's stronger. because they are massive. Yes. Yeah. So as you reduce the mass of the yeah. particle, okay. Okay. the difference should go to, to zero. zero. To zero. Okay. Uh, indeed, particles tend to be behaves like a density of fluid. So this quantity <coughs> which is Special density of particles behaves like density of fluid. Well, very, Is it true yeah. for inertial particles? Okay, we will uh, we will continue to answer to your question during the next slides. Okay, what uh, this is qualitative pictures. There is no here up to now quantitative comparison. Now, also I would like to point out one aspect which. Uh, Interest also for people which study convection. If we have, if we switch on, switch off oscillations of grids, we obtain such temperature field <coughs> inside large scale circulations. So, in spite of <coughs> very huge temperature gradient, temperature difference, temperature gradient, vertical temperature gradient inside the large scale circulations is very small. In spite of the fact we have here inside the circulations larger horizontal temperature yes, in spite uh, of the fact temperature okay. of the wall equal each other there's a counterclockwise <coughs> counterclockwise circulation here right no, this is this no the other way around is that right no, no, is this no, way around no this is yeah yeah so uh, this is uh, hot plumes this is uh, cold plumes cool but air. if we yeah. include oscillation of grids we obtain such temperature field Mm -hmm. Practically mm -hmm. uniform in horizontal direction and very strong temperature gradient here. Now, quantitative results. Quantitative results. So, this is profile of temperature for stable stratified flow, this one stable, and this profiles for the particle distribution, which shows that really we have accumulation of particles in the vicinity of the temperature movement. No, so, so, uh, you should emphasize you ask maybe. the equation. Yeah. Unstably stratified means always top heavy for you. Unstably stratified means that we heat below. Mm. Yeah, but more, important, more importantly, that the density is really heavier at the top than. Yeah, you know. yeah, of course. Yeah. Exactly. Now, so we have mean field equation. Let's consider large Peclair number so we can neglect molecular effects. So we have such equation with this effective velocity. Uh, in steady state, the derivative of mean field equals zero. We obtain such equation. Substitute, okay, and so this equation obtain distribution of number density. Now let's compare with experimental results. This is this uh, um, dimensional less number density versus temperature difference divided by T. If we forget, if we don't know about the effect of turbulent thermal diffusion or effect of effective velocity, we should obtain such distribution. N is constant. 
for anything. But we see this. Moreover, we perform a lot of experiments. Red line is the unstable stratified flow, blue line is stable stratified flow. Where, where all this obtained that coefficient alpha is more than unity. I remind you that for yeah. inertial particle alpha yes. equals for non inertial one, and for inertial particles there is a contribution. Mm -hmm. We use in these experiments one micrometer particles. And yeah, yeah. So contribution of inertia effect is not so large. 0.5, but no less. But alpha shouldn't depend. Alpha should depend on the particle, not on your stratification. Uh, right. Alpha depends on. Uh, on the alpha particle. depends on mass of particles to mass yes. of certain molecules. Depends on Reynolds number. So depends on Peclet number. But uh, in principle, for uh, big gradient, it's true. Yeah. Uh, it depends on temperature. You seem to get two different alpha for two different kinds of stratification. Why? Uh, okay, this is unstable stratified flow and this is stable stratified. So, of course, when we change direction of temperature to gradient, we see in the previous slide that temperature gradient is slightly different, of course. This is slightly another. Okay, here, correct. Yeah. But uh, they are not the, exactly the same if we turn out this in that way. They're not exactly the same. That's why we obtain not exactly the same for stable and stable stratified flows. Now, let us change way of production of turbulence. Let us, instead of oscillating grids, use propellers. But uh, these propellers are set in symmetrical way in order to avoid, for just in case, in order to avoid any generation of kinetic velocity. Okay. Uh, this uh, system allows to get mo larger Reynolds number. So this is turbulent velocity field. And, uh, and okay, this is result. So here we see that uh, this contribution of inertial particles is larger because Reynolds number is larger. Uh, but nevertheless, again, we never obtain such distribution. We perform hundreds of experiments with different conditions. We never obtain horizontal line, which implies that in experiment, this effective velocity exists. <coughs> okay, this is references for experimental studies. Uh, okay, we also perform study in uh, atmospheric turbulence, but human cell days actually reproduce this effect in DMS. Uh, so it was created temperature distribution, temperature minimum in the center. It was started <coughs> from unit. Okay. It will finish and then we'll run again. <coughs> Okay, we start, we start with uniform distribution of number density. And we see formation of particles, Indeed. particle layer, in the vicinity of the temperature minimum. And we see formation of uh, inhomogeneous distribution in mean particle number density. Okay. So, what we see how here... Was the, how was the heating or cooling? Was there a cooling in the... Plane? Yeah, it was cooling in the middle plane. Oh, negative source. Okay. Yeah. And this is the distribution of mean number density. And the uh, mean number density of particles. And this is distribution of density of fluid. There are no any external pressure gradient. So, we have concentration of particles in the vicinity of the maximum fluid pressure which applies in the vicinity of the minimum mean temperature. So, experiments Periodic. DNS atmospheric observations detailed atmospheric observations shows that indeed this effect of large 
scale particle uh, formation of particle homogeneity due to the effect of velocity if really exists. This uh, numerical simulation will be performed for non-inertial particles up to now. The next program is to perform for inertial particles and to study in DNS in more detail. So up to now we, we, told, uh, we spoke about the large scale effects. What about small scale effects? Is it possible to form clusters of particles in very small scales? Of course, in view of applications, it's a very important question. As we told that, uh, since locally, due to the inertia effects, particles accumulate in the region between the areas, in the regions with the higher pressure fluctuations, or in the regions with the low vorticity fluctuations, then locally they accumulate in this region. Of course, there is turbulent diffusion, scale-dependent turbulent diffusion, which causes relaxation of clusters. So the uh, co uh, competition between this mechanism can result uh, in formation of small-scale clusters. Of course, since uh, turbulent diffusion is smaller in a, in a diffusive scale, so we expect that clusters should be localized like in a Commodore of scales. Uh, is it possible to organize here the process which is similar to the small-scale dynamo? Yes. Instability, which causes, for example, generation of large scale magnetic, um, uh, small scale magnetic flux tubes, small scale dynamo. The answer is yes. It's possible, and we obtained, uh, we studied this effect and predicted this effect. But in experiments, it's not so easy to find, uh, to find conditions for the small scale instability. So there is only unique possibility. For clustering, is uh, to have a source term. For example, to have uh, to have uh, gradient of mean number density or gradient of temperature, which can produce strong fluctuations in particle special distributions. Okay, our experiment shows. So, in order to, to study small scale effects, we have to derive equations and to measure two-point collision functions of particle number density. Or maybe I will skip description of method of measurement. What we found, and it was a great surprise for us, mm. when we impose temperature gradient to the system, we obtain that the correlation function for the particle number density is very high. When we switch of temperature gradient, we obtain very small, very small uh, clustering effect in uh, the particles. I'd like to say here that in experiments, we consider particles, 10 micrometer of particles, turbulence based on the integral scale and RMS velocity, Reynolds number 150, which is not large. So it's difficult to expect to have very strong inertial clustering. Stock style in one order of magnitude smaller than the Kolmogorov style. So stock style, stock's number is small. And nevertheless, if we include temperature gradient, we obtain very strong clusterization. And after that, we see this is in experiments, we develop a theory for this effect. Indeed, we have equation for the number density, the same equation for fluctuations. We have two source terms. One is fluctuations of divergency, another is uh, V number N. This source term produces source term and equation for the two-point collision functions for the, uh, for the number density. So we will have equation for the two-point correlation function uh, for the number density, which is in some sense similar to equation Kazantsev equation for the magnetic fluctuations, but we have here source term. And this, and since we are far in the experiments on the excitation of small-scale instability or small-scale dynamo, 
of particles in our density. <coughs> and the unique source of clusterization is, uh, uh, is uh, caused by the temperature gradient. Okay, uh, and here inertia effects is very important for clustering. And this, <coughs> the main source of clustering here is correlation, two point correlation function of divergence of velocity fluctuations. For inertial particles, this is fluctuations of two Laplacians of pressure. Because I said that velocity of the particles equals velocity of fluid flow plus Stokes time multiplied by Laplacian fluctuations of pressure divided by A. And fluctuations of these two point the functions of these fluctuations produces the, this depends on the temperature fluctuations, which in the presence of the mean temperature gradient produces the okay, temperature fluctuations and yields yields strong source for fluctuations of number density. And only isn't finally, that, isn't that true then? Nevertheless, that the maximum uh, particle contrast for non-inertial particles that you can get will be as big as the temperature, as the density fluctuations. Right. It's larger you know, for non-inertial particles. You know, here, uh, here, yeah. Axel, very important that here there is a heat flux. So any correlation type like a mm -hmm. density, density to point is very small. Mm -hmm. Only strong correlation is a temperature. Mm -hmm. fluctuations. Right. This is really strong, strong fluctuations due to the gradient of mean number density. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have a gradient uh, due to the gradient of temperature. Gradient of temperature produces, uh, produces uh, uh, temperature fluctuations which is a source for fluctuations of number density. But actually ask what happened with uh, an, uh, zero mass of particles. Uh, if, uh, okay, if uh, Stokes time tends to zero, fluctuations for this parameter range are very small. But if we create strong turbulence with very high Reynolds number, then it's possible to observe inertial clustering due to the just carrying of particles to the boundary of the bearings. But this experiment Inertial is very yeah. difficult to perform mm -hmm. because, okay, it's possible to create large Reynolds number in a wind tunnel, but we have to study situations in a closed box and measure effects yeah. very detailed, so it's mm -hmm. not so easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and at the end, our theory, a theoretical curve, solid, and this is experimental curves, uh, are in a good agreement. Of course, this effect also can be detected in DNS. We um, hope so. Yeah, we hope. And of course, this, all these results has a very broad application. For example, there is a problem of appearance of rain. Rain. Yeah. Rain. Yes. How is it possible to form rain? If we have droplets quick. Quick. or a quick rain yes. of the same size, there is no any chance to get us rain. So we need to have collisions between droplets in order to have larger droplets. So if we start with the 10 micrometers droplets, if there is no any additional effects, they will fall down. So we need to have collisions between, between droplets in order to organize large rain droplets and they fall down. So we need to have broad distribution, size distribution of droplets if we have such drop uh, broad distribution, then rain will start very fast. So this clustering, small-scale clustering of particles serves at the centers of nucleations of drop of droplets. Also, uh, droplets this effects also affects uh, just droplets due to the clustering processes. Uh, they tend to be accumulated in the large droplets. Okay, conclusions. So we discussed here uh, turbulent thermal diffusion effect, large formation of large scale clustering, 
And this effect was produced theoretically in the technical laboratory experiments in atmospheric flow and in DMS. And the essence of this effect is the appearance of the flux of the particles, which is directed as well as the heat flux, to the minimum of mean temperature. And, uh, okay, and uh, this uh, effect can explain formation of large scale uh, clouds of aerosol particles. Everyone knows that uh, there is correlation between the appearance of temperature inversion and pollutants. So pollutants tend to be accumulated in the vicinity of the temperature minimum. minimum. And one of the mechanisms which I've explained in this formation, this is the effect of turbulent thermal diffusion. We also uh, discussed small scale clustering effect. And for when we have stratified turbulence with temperature gradient, with greater mean temperature, we obtain very strong clustering of particles, and the critic scale of clusters is of the order of Kolmogorov scale. For example, atmospheric turbulence, Kolmogorov scale of the order of uh, centimeters or less, uh, yeah, or even millimeters. Yeah. In our laboratory, Kolmogorov scale of the order of half of millimeter. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Very interesting talk. Any questions, please? Can I ask one? Yeah. So, how is this different from entropy maximization in statistical mechanics? Okay. Uh, this effect, uh, you mean uh, mean field effects? I mean, the, I mean, the fact that you have your uh, heavier mass, heavier particle that accumulates or length is higher. Or if you have simply tracers, so particle with a name, they will tend to distribute in a uniform way such n over rho is constant. This should be resulted in easy in average, in average, just in average. This yeah, is large scale what, effect. No, no, what's that saying? It's that, not local result, effect. That, but these are results that should be derivable in statistical mechanics. Of course, we use statistical mechanics and we derive just yeah, this. Why, I mean, where is, where is the need of turbulence now? Oh, well, what is the role of turbulence? Yes, you can derive Okay, without in. turbulence, there is no any effect. Why not? This is important. No, no. If we no, put... Why not? There is a small effect. Okay, it's of course. Effect, okay, but... there is a, a molecular effect. Yes. A molecular, for particles, thermophoresis, and for gases, thermal, molecular thermal diffusion. There is such effects, uh, and uh, you can calculate how many times you will, you will wait you know, to organize clouds. Yes, of no, 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 no. I, I know that the time scale will be different because you speed up the diffusion with turbulence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the of course. Is, the math that, uh, that describes the, yeah. the, the phenomena should okay. be any different. Yeah, okay. I would like to say the following. The mechanism of accumulation of particles due to the turbulence effects is completely different from the molecular effect. We just call this effect turbulent thermal diffusion but why? because... Sorry? Why? Why it's completely different? I don't see the reason. Uh, they completely different be because... At the, at the end you, you get maximal entropy. Bec no, no, because entropy we, have, we have here How heat flux. How do you find entropy here? There's strongly non to be assisted. Well, you can define you the occupation number. I, I think... Uh, so I think what? Equation um, number of available states, I mean, right. uh, and then you maximize it. Oh, yeah, all results is yeah, called by correlation between velocity fluctuations and okay. temperature fluctuations. When you're thinking about temperature, you're thinking a spectra which is called as k square, right? Yeah. You know, which is increasing with the k. Here you have a spectra which is k to the minus 5 times, which is decreasing with k. In completely different physics. That's right, but we've got formal difference and deep formal difference. If we study heavy particles, we've got this alpha larger than 1 in any situation. If you t we take thermophoresis, uh, alpha sometimes may be negative. Even. It depends on uh, of Knudsen number. If we speak about gases, it depends on a uh, ratio of mass molecule of surrounding fluid and fluid of, of admission. So, answer is uh, totally different. Alpha is positive for heavy particles, 
and more than one in any situation. It's not the same. For in bubbles, principle, uh, this effect is similar to diamagnetic velocity. More. For example, we have, if we have uh, inhomogeneous turbulence, so magnetic field will be pushed out from the regions with a high intensity. So this is collective effect. Mm -hmm. The same for effective velocity, this is collective effect. It's why we, f we name this effect turbulent thermal diffusion and no, not th th thermal uh, turbophoresis because turbophoresis has the real velocity of particles and this is collective effect. So we have to accumulate effect in the laboratory. For we have to wait long and we have to measure... Molecular uh, effect. Yeah. So this is real collective effect. And without turbulence, there is no any effect like this. Yeah. When he is talking about V effective, that really does not correspond to any material velocity. Mm -hmm. Just flux. No, no, but that's but that's the same for entropy. Entropy can have a flux and there be no material, no material flow associated mm -hmm. with it. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, right. But I, I, I think nothing. it's probably fair to say that the two effects are analogous at some level, and, and the level would be where in one case you have uh, molecules and here you have terminal eddies. And yes. you have a mean free path between molecules on the one hand and a typical correlation length on the other hand. So on the uh, that level... Uh, no, actually. If the the form of flux... Okay, if we, if we see the form yeah, of yeah. the flux, I, think I would like to show you transparency. Yeah, it's here. There's, there's yeah. similarity in the end equation that you derive. But the physics is completely different. Right. The physics, of course, is completely different. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, in principle, uh, if we see the form of the heat flux here, of course, it's uh, very similar to the molecular flux, the form. Here, there is a turbulent diffusion, which is uh, similar to Brolin diffusion, and this is uh, cross effect which is uh, similar to the thermophoresis or thermal uh, diffusion, molecular thermal diffusion. But only this similarity, nothing else. Just form of the flux. But of course, value of coefficients are much larger. And this coefficient depends on other parameters no, no, than the, the case. So physics are really completely different. And again, yeah. the, the and for inertial particles, it's principally important to have heat flux. Either, but so KT why, why is not the same. Why is the flux for inertial particles? For inertial particles, because... You just, you just need a density the gradient. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we, need, uh, we need the heat gradient. Okay, uh, we need correlation between velocity fluctuations and velocity of pressure. Okay, so that can be density. It doesn't have to be density. Yeah, but it is in your yeah, and for large scale effect, for small scale effects, we have we need to have such correlation yeah. function, Laplace impression, Laplace impression, and if we rewrite this, only contribution to clustering comes from the theta theta fluctuations, and. Uh, okay, here's some function, and flotations density density doesn't contribute to the clustering at all, because these correlations will be proportional to the flux of mass, which is very small. But this is will be proportional to the square of heat flux, and this is principally different. Also. Such correlations like density temperature does play in the world. And this is principally. So heat flux plays here a very crucial role. The same for effective velocity. When we have, yeah, when the effective velocity is proportional to this. If we put here density, we obtain immediately flux of mass, which is small. So here there are two contributions. One is due to uh, U, Laplace and theta, 
and another U Laplacian. Okay, I can't uh, write here some other quantities, but important here. Contribution of heat flux is the uh, dominant. This is very small because it's proportional to the flux of mass of fluid. But this is principally important. So I think that without heat flux, it's difficult to organize. So heat flux is important here. This is a key, key ingredient of all these effects. Heat flux. But that's because, for example, I can have a pressure gradient without having any heat flux. If, for example, I use a... Ah, you mean, if you organize it some way, fluctuations of pressure, which correlate it with the... No, if you yeah, do if it. I velocity... If I use gravity, for example. Uh, I can how, have my pressure. How gravity will be correlated with the fluctuations of velocity? I don't know. Mm, it's difficult. So to it's, uh, you need to well, have correlation between well, velocity well, and temperature. Why not? If you have a, a statistic system, gravity will be correlated with velocity. But it's a dynamic system. It's not statistic. But it's a very important point. You know, between say, no, 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 I know that this is a <coughs> dynamic system. So what I'm thinking is in difference between the dynamic system and the uh, uh, molecular. <laughs> statistics system is very deep. In what sense? In statistical system, U and cardinal is in the, of p particles of molecules is independent dynamical uh, value. And in 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 this system, it is we we have got field uh, description. So velocity is function of coordinate and, and time. And for static for particles, at least in classical description, uh, R is function of time and velocity is function of time. So you cannot how to say to do the same. Well, you, you can have a velocity function of space in statistical mechanics. Uh, you see, if you have uh, non inertial particles, because it's for it's example, it's not, it's not all, the, all the statistical mechanics description of a globular cluster, for example. You can do so velocity is fields, of course. A yes, of you can do it, but in this situation. Uh, but not for uh, for uh, for molecules. It yeah. it is for for fields. Yeah. I would fields. like to point out that uh, yeah. that are, okay, only yeah, maybe. Galaxy, how does it yeah. make any difference? Uh, okay. Galaxy, how no, does the, it make any difference? The main difference comes from the uh, For it's clearly it's, it's clear. It's clear that for in uh, no, uh, for. Inertial effects, heat flux plays a crucial role. Now, if we have non-inertial particles, so we have such correlation function. Here, fluctuations of divergence U are determined by the, again, fluctuations of velocity multiplied by the mean density divided by density. Okay? So again, we have here, the next contribution, if we have correlation between velocity and density, this correlation is very small. Because the flex of mass. Because I, I think he is not doubting the results. Yeah. He is just saying that you could get the same results. Why do you need to use the tools of turbulence? You could, could you not rather use tools of statistical mechanics to do this? But yes. statistical mechanics describe turbulence. I don't see any difference between Statist the description no. of turbulence. Some part and of statistical mechanics. This is just a main tool for description of turbulence. This is statistical mechanics. But, again, turbulence, this is the main ingredient. I would say stratified turbulence main ingredient. Yeah. This is like a, a helicity. Helicity is a turbulent object. Without helicity, you cannot have dynamo. What is it's a true call 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 Random, I'm random. Sure. <laughs> okay, I, I, will, I would say, okay, okay, you cannot have, think of large scale dynamo, uh, large scale dynamo. Uh, large scale so, we don't speak world. about yeah. the dynamical system. We don't speak, we, again, maybe we can accept, how to say, weak formulation. Yeah. Uh, we, instead of turbulence, maybe we've got random velocity. Yeah, of course. 
Random velocity field. We need random velocity field because this effect exists also for small Peclean number. Simple in laboratory, much more simple to build yeah. turbulence. You need it's to random. have, but effect will be small because it's proportional to the Peclean number. So, of course, this effect, like uh, uh, alpha effect, exists for small molecules number. But fluctuations, uh, it is maybe it is turbulent feature. I mean, accumulation of particles in small scales. Because you need uh, spectra. You need many things. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I think it's a turbulent phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, clusterization. Yeah, clusterization is. Yeah, it is a random field phenomenon. Random but phenomenon. small scale dynamo, do you have in a random velocity? No, yeah. it's difficult. You need, the, you need spectra, you know? No, no, no not necessarily. A uh, large quantum number. Random velocity field. But again, you need, you uh, need, you need competition. Yeah, if generation. small quantum number, I agree with you. If large quantum number, we have random velocity field. Like this, like a. You know, you but again, you, again, you, 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 you will have not cluster, small scale cluster. It will be the same scale as turbulence. Yeah, yeah of yes, course, yes. Yeah. If you need clustering small consists scale. only for large quantum number. Yes, uh, large mid number. Yeah, exactly, solid one. Okay. Okay. If there are no further questions, then we thank Igor again. So how about next Wednesday? Any volunteers for next Wednesday?